in six weeks after we started our, our three by five card file system, everything had turned around. I live by three rules. To don't sweat the small stuff, what doesn't matter just doesn't matter. Mm -hmm to laugh every single day. Oh my goodness. I'm going to look like Laura Linney. Since April is Prosperity Month in the Happiness File, and that's what my theme is for this month, I wanted to talk about prosperity. When I wrote the good book, it was the result of three years of climbing out of credit card debt, 26,000 900 and some dollars of credit card debt. And what I learned through those three years, and I share it in the book, but I'll tell you the main things. One, I learned that more money doesn't solve your financial problems. That's what I thought. I thought, all I need to do is make more money. Somehow, I don't know, I wasn't going to rob a bank, but just do something to make more money. And I'm creative, so I thought I can think my way out of this. But the answer isn't more money, because if you don't handle the money you have now, when you get more, you make a bigger mess of it. That's why lottery winners end up destitute sometimes, and even millionaires that go bankrupt, and it's because they didn't know how to handle what they had. This is a perfect time, if you're in money troubles, to start at the bottom and say, I'm going to handle, I'm going to be a good steward of my money right now. And I'm going to get Fly Lady's Face Journal and get the good book that shows you step by step how I got out of debt. The hardest part for me getting out of debt was to face it. I didn't want to know, and I didn't know. I didn't know how much each of my credit cards, I had about 20 of them. No, that's not true. I had 10. But I didn't know how much they were. I, I'd wait until they'd say, you can't use it anymore, so put it away before I'd quit. And I looked at my credit cards as income. So I'd get a new credit card and it'd say, you have a $20,000 limit. It was like I got a $20,000 raise. So you can see where I was back in 2002. So getting to know the whole story is the first part in that it hurts. It hurts to see what you've done. It's embarrassing. Finances are embarrassing. And I could not believe I was in such debt. I had no idea. And then the other part of the whole equation is to get to change your behavior. And guess who's behind your behavior? It's a child. It's your inner child. That's when I met Nellie, it was 2002, and I had been challenged to write a financial, a household finance organized book that would be funny, and my finances were in such a mess, I'd be a hypocrite if I wrote it. And I told the editor, I, I can't write a book on finance, it's, it's not funny either, so it's not going to be humorous. And it ended up that I realized I met Nellie, my inner child, and she was the cause of my spending and my looking at credit cards as income. That's a childlike approach to money. And I had to get to know her and play with her and be loving and guiding with her. If you had a real nine-year-old and she came to you and said, Mom, can I have a couple hundred dollars and go over to the mall? You wouldn't give her that money, and yet that's really what you do with your own self when you haven't addressed this childlike behavior about spending. And however you got into your mess financially, it's because of that behavior. So you have to get to know the little entity behind that behavior. And once you do, it is so fun because it's you and your little inner child against the world. And what's the world out there at the mall? It's aiming straight at your inner child to get you to buy stuff, not at the adult in you. After I got to know Nellie and two or three months into my trek out of the debt, I realized how tricky she is because I thought I had a pretty good handle on her. And one day I was at the grocery store and I was putting the groceries from the cart into my trunk and on the top of one of the bags was a, a bag of hard candy that I love. And number one, we were needing sugar, that was a, a, an adult rule we had. And number two, I, I, if you don't buy it, you can't eat it. And here was this sack of candy in the top of one of my grocery bags. And I, I looked at that and I woke up and I thought, Nellie, you're behind this. You, you saw that candy on those candy racks right by the checkout counter. 
and the mom has, is preoccupied with the money going up on the cash register and trying to read the headlines on all the magazines and the Enquirer. And so I said, you little naughty little girl, we are taking these candies back in. You, you, we paid for them. I didn't even pay any attention. But I decided I would take her back in there, just like you would a child who had taken something. I took it back in, and I got a receipt, my money back for it. And that was the end of that. And she quit being tricky at the grocery store. But then you'll find all kinds of ways to trick yourself. And you just have to be awake. Another one. I was at a department store that I love. And I love china and dishes and pottery. And I was looking at some things on sale. And there was this big, beautiful plate. Not in my budget. It was like $65. But it was half price. So it would be 30 something. And Nellie wanted it. And I said, I had it in my hand. And I said, N no, we, we, we can't have it. It's not on our budget. And Nellie, and I said, in fact, we cut up this credit card for this department store. And Nellie said, well, we could get a new card and, the, and you get 10% off on the half price figure. So then it would be like 20 some dollars still not in our budget. And here I am standing, I am not talking to myself because I do not want to get put away, but I'm thinking this and I'm holding that plate. And I start to put it down and then I pick it back up and finally I said, no, here's what we're going to do. I reached into my purse, got my checkbook out, and I wrote a check for $35 to Pam Young and I said to Nellie, this is going in our savings account because the department store isn't going to get this money and we don't need the plate and now we'll have 35 more dollars for us. And Nellie loved it. She shut up and I didn't have any more of those sales arguments. But there were others. One of the things I ask you to do in the good book is to cut up your credit cards, except one, because most of the time when you travel, you need a credit card. And I actually had a credit card funeral, and my husband Terry videotaped it. And sometime down the road, I'll show it to you and make it fun. So I told you I was 26,900 and blah, blah, blah dollars in credit card debt. It took me three years to get out of that debt. And in the good book, I show you step by step how I did it and the tools that I used for Nelly, because it's all about your behavior with your own self that will help you get out of debt. Adore who you are. Adore where you are. Adore who you're with.